What's up Pro Guides fam? We released a few videos lately discussing the pros and cons of online play, and a lot of you guys seemed interested in learning how you can specifically improve your internet connections. Whether you enjoy playing online or not, you've been likely playing a lot of it lately, as IRL tournaments and meetups won't be returning for a while. A perfect internet connection won't necessarily solve every issue that comes with Smash Online, and you can check out how to make online fun videos for more solutions, but the first step is getting rid of that pesky lag. For our question of the day, when is the last time you played Smash Online? Let us know in the comments and stay tuned to learn all of our secrets improving your connection. If you've ever felt lost trying to improve at Smash, then you're not alone, we get it. Especially with the lack of offline tournament footage to study, getting to the next level may feel impossible, but it's not. Pro Guides has so many ways to up your game. Our website ProGuides.com features a tier list fully stocked with guides on literally every single character in the game. Our pro courses offer exclusive lessons featuring top players such as MKLeo, Zero, and Esam. And with our Player Pro platform, you can get instant access to skilled coaches who can train you personally. We're making the extra efforts to increase your learning opportunities such as a newly launched live class that you can find right here on our YouTube channel. You can catch these for free Monday through Friday at 12 o'clock PST, so make sure that you hit that subscribe button and you never miss when we go live. Online lag can be a frustrating experience, but it doesn't have to be so bad. When referring to online Smash, we often use the term Wi-Fi, but Wi-Fi is actually a suboptimal way to play. With any device, connecting to the internet wirelessly sacrifices a bit of your internet strength. Especially if you're far from the modem, you're getting a weaker and less consistent signal, which is surely going to add lag to your Smash online experience. The fix is simple, go wired. With an ethernet cable and a USB ethernet adapter, you can connect your switch directly to your internet source for a stronger, more stable connection. What kind of adapter do you need, and where can you find one? There are loads of USB Ethernet adapters on the market, and you can find them on Amazon, Micro Center, Best Buy, or any other electronics retailer. To be more specific, you're looking for an adapter that has one USB-A which will plug into your switch, and one female Ethernet port which will connect your Ethernet cable to your router or modem. For the best connection, you should look for one that supports USB 3.0, and a gigabit Ethernet is nice too, although it isn't necessary for a switch. Don't go just by these settings though, as the switch isn't necessarily compatible with every single adapter. Check reviews, FAQs, or even just Google the name of the specific adapter model accompanied by the word switch to confirm whether or not it's compatible. You should also be looking at the length of the wire connected to the USB portion of the adapter to the Ethernet port. In order to access the USB 3.0's potential, you'll need to plug this adapter into the USB port inside of your switch's dock. This port is colored in blue, indicating USB 3.0's capabilities. If the wire on the adapter isn't long enough or it just doesn't have one at all, you won't be able to close your switch dock with it attached, so you may not be able to fit the Ethernet cable at all. Keep in mind that the switch dock does have a convenient pocket for your cables to fit through while it is closed. You probably already have an Ethernet cable, but this is just as vital to the wired setup. Keep in mind that this cable must be able to read from your switch to your internet source, so if you're buying one, ensure that it meets the necessary measurements. Once you've picked out and purchased your adapter and cables, it's time to hook everything up, which is a very simple process. First, install the Ethernet adapter by plugging the USB-N into the USB-A port of the inside of your dock. If you're using an adapter that doesn't support USB 3.0, it should be fine to plug this one into the external ports as well, but it's a good idea to use the internal ports either way. Make sure that adapter is securely plugged in, and close your dock door allowing the adapter wire to fit comfortably in the dock's wired pocket. Next, attach either end of the Ethernet cable into one of the LAN ports on your modem or router. These will most likely be the only Ethernet ports available on your modem if it's hooked up properly, but if you run into issues, make sure to test each port. Carefully, run the cable of your switch and plug the other end into the Ethernet port on your Ethernet adapter. Voila, you're all set up. Now it's time to go to your switch's internet settings. Select wired connection and connects. You can perform a connection test to compare your upload and download speeds to your Wi-Fi connection and see if that has actually improved. Look for the wire icon next to the clock on your home screen to confirm that you're connected properly via the Ethernet cable. Even if you aren't using a wired connection, you can also upgrade your switch's capabilities with a useful setting. Select your connection of choice in the switch's internet settings and go to change settings. There you'll find the MTU. By default, the MTU should be set to 1400, but changing this to 1500 will in most cases give you a better netplay experience. The MTU determines the size of each packet of data the console receives per request. Make sure to test your connection to ensure that this improves it. Sadly, your connection in Smash will only be as good as your opponent's, but if you're playing against an opponent who is also using a wired connection with good internet service, then you'll find the best possible online experience, especially if the other player lives in your region. 
Playing with a wired connection also increases your eligibility to enter online tournaments. Many online events require you to use wired connections, so you may also be subject to a lag test which is becoming quite infamous. Most importantly though, using a wired connection will give you and your opponents the most enjoyable match and thus the most competitive and legitimate gameplay for online. As we mentioned in our previous videos, lag interferes with the control of your character, making technical inputs and precise spacing much more difficult. It also directly nerfs reactionary punishes, making many moves effectively safer than they would be offline. This has different effects on different characters, resulting in an altered tier balance. Characters like Ness and Game & Watch can feel almost impossible to whiff punish, and characters like Joker will struggle to pinpoint their crucial setups. The degree of lag will pretty directly correlate to the degree of these differences as well, so optimizing your connection will mitigate these issues and give you the closest thing to the offline smash that you love. Do you play Smash with a wired connection? If not, we hope this helps you understand how to set it up and why it's a great idea to do so. We've got plenty more Smash content coming your way, so make sure you subscribe to Pro Guides and turn on the notifications so you never miss a thing. Also, send this video to your friends if you want to get them to play online Smash with you with a wired connection. And with that all being said, I hope you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day.